and welcome back to the Ravnica Allegiance constructed set review where we are looking at all the cards in Ravnica Allegiance through the eyes of standard and giving them all a letter grade and even though even some of the cards that aren't uh, going to see a whole lot of play if they're pretty interesting we're talking about them so welcome everybody over on YouTube and of course everybody here in the Twitch chat joining me live as well of course Waticus, welcome back so talk about uh, grading these cards. I'll kind of quickly go over the grading scale again if uh, you're just joining us or if you're just watching this one. Uh, so we have A through F is the grades that we're giving out. So an A is a card that's a format all-star among multiple archetypes. So we're looking at cards such as Jade Light Ranger, Lava Coil, Adanto Vanguard, Ravenous Chupacabra, or Searcherous Kanta in the current format. Um, of course, it could be better than an A. It could be an A+. Plus. That'd be cards like Teferi, History of Benalia, or Niv-Mizzet, in my opinion. A B is a format staple among multiple archetypes, including sideboard cards, or a defining card in a single highly played archetype. So some cards I have for Bs are cards like Merfolk Branchwalker, Lightning Strike, Takali Honor Guard, Duress, or Sinister Sabotage. C is a card that will see some regular amount of play in the format or is a real important card in a single highly played archetype. So these are cards like Druid of the Cowl or Shock, Dauntless Bodyguard, Playcrafter, Radical Idea. Uh, D is a card that sees a very slight amount of play. If it barely sees a little bit of play in standard, that's going to be a D. Could be like a, a side card that barely sees a little bit of cyborg cards, such as Crushing Canopy or Invoke the Divine. Or maybe cards like Gutter Sniper, Lookout Dispersal, sees a little bit of play. Or it could be a card that just has a fringe archetype built around it, like Lich's Mastery or Haphazard Bombardment is another um, example there. And then F are cards that just won't, that shouldn't see play in the format. They're like draft commons or some rares that are Fs, are, for examples, are like Old Growth Dryads, Alpine Moon, Ajani's Last Stand, Fraying Omnipotence, or Fleet Swallower. Of course, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see this grading scale down below in the information. All right, so red is up next. And we got Act of Treason to start with. Hawkeye, you want to help us out? All right, good boy. All right, Act of Treason, we know this card. Three and a red for, uh, three and a red, it's two and a red, sorry. Two and a red, which is three mana total. I'll be saying the numbers like that with the, uh, the amount of generic mana plus any colored mana. So two and a red for a sorcery, gain control of target creature until end of turn, untap that creature, it gains haste. Uh, Act of Treason effects are basically very fringe play fringe play stuff. Um, I think this is kind of between an F and a, uh, and like a D, like maybe a D, like maybe like some fringe deck will want Act of Treason. If, you know, there is a lot of sacrifice things in the set, so maybe there's going to be a fringe steal your, steal your stuff deck and sack it kind of thing. And uh, yeah, so I'm going D. Uh, yeah, there's no E for just grading scales in in america that's kind of like the grading scale for like grade level grades and everything like that yeah talking about standard uh so yeah talking constructed and not not really the other formats just standard all right uh next card's a rare <clears throat> amplifier i like the art on this card a lot two red red for a one one all right if we're looking at four mana for a 1-1, one, one. this card's got to be amazing, right? So let's see what it does. It's a lot of words on here. I actually haven't read this card yet. So at the beginning of your upkeep, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Until your next turn, Amplifier's based power becomes twice that card's power, and its base toughness becomes twice that card's toughness. Put the real card at the bottom of your library in a random order. All right, so it's a, so you don't get any card advantage from it at all, even though you're revealing cards... So you, you have to reveal tons of cards from your library, and you basically, basically this four mana thing is a is going to be a large creature, even if you, even if you reveal a two two, amplifier is a four four. Card gets, card gets kind of big. Yeah, it's going to be an F, but it's honestly not that bad. Yeah, I wish I had trample too. But. Yeah, it's going to be enough. It's not going to see any standard play, but yeah. All right, next card is Burn Bright. 
Two and a red instant creatures you control get plus two, plus zero until end of turn. Uh, these effects are already in standard. Uh, F. I mean, sure, if you want to go like F plus, D minus. Whatever, that, that effect's already in standard. It is a very Johnny's cards. Yeah, you can reel Galta and then thud them. Nice. Um, next up is Birding Tree Vandal. Two and a red for a 2-1 with Riot. Riot is the creature either enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter or haste, and you get to choose which one. So any cards we say have Riot, that's what it does. So this is a 2-1 with Riot. Whenever Burning Tree Vandal attacks, you may discard a card if you do draw a card. So you're looking at like three mana, 2-1 haste, dis attack, discard a card, then you rummage, or three mana, 3-2 three, attack rummage. Yeah, that's an F. I don't think that's going to see any play. Uh, I think there's just better things to be doing with, with your mana. I'm going F. Riot does stack, yes. Riot does, does stack. And also, also uh, I've, I've heard a lot of questions about this with Riot. Riot is not a trigger whenever it enters the battlefield, so Takatli Honor Guard does not stop Riot. Like, Riot just, the creature enters with a counter or it enters with haste. So Takatli Honor Guard doesn't do anything with Riot. So you can play, like, Takatli Honor Guard in your Riot deck and so on. Or you don't have to be scared about, like, playing an all-Riot deck that gets shut down by Vanguard or something. All right, the next card is uh, Cavalcade of Calamity. One in a red for an enchantment. Whenever a creature you control with power one or less attacks, conclu uh, Caval Cavalcade of Calamity deals one damage to the player or planeswalker that creature is attacking. That's a good F. Next, Claymore Shaman. Two and a red for a 1 1 with Riot. Whenever Claymore Shaman attacks, target creature and opponent controls can't block this turn. Hmm. So this one, all right, so we, all right, so we had, um, what's the card, what's the crasher, um, like the, the crasher card that's like on, on something crasher, on crop, there we go, on crop crasher. So on crop crasher was two and a red, three, two make a creature not be able to block, but then it, you can't untap it kind of thing. This is a 1-1 one, one that has haste like that, and then they just can't block, and then you can do the same thing the next turn and do the same thing the next turn. So is reducing your creature for being a 3-2 to a 1-1 one, one worth it for like kind of saying they can't block all the time? I don't think so. So, yeah, I think this is an F, but, yeah. I think it was kind of good to kind of think about the card you know, some of these are just like obvious Fs, like this thing. That's one to, to kind of actually think about. But yeah, on crop was was really good. And I don't think don't think we're there. Um up next, Dagger Caster, three and a red for a two three. When Dagger Caster enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to each opponent and one damage to each creature your opponents control. Well, if you need more if you need more chain whirlers, like this is just this is just another Chain Whirler. Um, it's easier to cast. Uh, if if you have like four Chain Whirlers in the main and you're like, that's not enough. I need more Chain Whirlers in the, bo in the board. Yeah, it is splashable. If you want to give this Death Touch, you know how we talked about like the Death Touch thing? It's a lot easier to give this card Death Touch if you want, uh, if you want, if you want to use like your Death Touch things. Um, yeah, and you can hit it with Bugler. You can hit this, yeah, with... Militia Bugler can find your Chain Whirler now. Um, no, not, I'm not even going through with Limited. I'm just going through with Standard. So I'm going to give this card a D. I'm going to give this card a D. I think this could could see a little bit of play. I think this is kind of like similar to like Gutter Snipe or something. I think this is a D. The better that like tokens and like crappy creatures are, the better cards like Dagger Caster will be. Four mana is expensive for sure, though. That's true. Um, next up is Deface. Oh yeah, Warkite Marauder with this. Make their thing an, an 0-1 and then and then that. Ugh. One mana, destroy target artifact, destroy target creature with defender. Yeah, I mean, I guess if an artifact deck becomes big, 
It's an okay sideboard card. We'll go D again. D for deface. What do you think of Dak Faden for modern? Is it Phoenix? Well, Dak Faden's not modern legal. So. Ugh. Yeah. All right, next up is Electro Dominance. You have X red red for an instant. This is a rare. Electro Dominance deals X damage to any target. You may cast a card with converted mana cost X or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. Whoa. And here we have we have a C, and then a lot of people go in A, A plus, or A minus. This card does have crazy potential. So it's really so first of first off, it's a really expensive burn spell. Um it is like, you know, if you want to deal four damage and like if you want to kill a crackling drake and you want to deal four damage, it's gonna cost you six mana to to kill a crackling drake. So it's gonna cost you a whole lot of mana. Hey nerd girl. Happy Friday. The thing that... that And uh, Chris just brought this up. The thing that can really makes this card scary is, of course, uh, Wilderness Reclamation. Wilderness Reclamation plus this card where you get to untap your, your lands at your end step. So you can just go to your end step. Let's say you have four mana. You can go to your end step, pay your four mana with the, real, with the Wilderness Reclamation trigger on the stack, untap your four mana tap your four again now you have eight mana now you get to deal six and put a six uh and then cast a six drop so you are casting things so cards with cast triggers they happen you know if you're if you're doing this for seven and playing a hatchery spider for whatever reason you're getting your your uh your seven mana um uh cast trigger off your hatchery spider um so yeah cast any cards sorceries instants creatures um anything like that so you can have your opponent can attack out and you can electro dominance and burn one creature and cast another creature to be able to block. Um, so, so there we go. So good question here. If the target is invalid, does the cast portion happen? No. So like if you try to kill a Drake and they dive down your Drake, you do not get to cast your card because it only has the one target and the, the spell will fizzle. So you, you will not cast your thing if, uh, if that happens. So it is very vulnerable to protection spells like Dive Down um, if you go at a creature. Obviously, you have the, the option of, of uh, dealing X to like a player also. Um, yeah, this is going to be certainly going to be a deck that a lot of people are going to be brewing around for sure. It, has, it can be really powerful. If you're playing a really uh, greedy deck with lots of different colors you can kind of get around that with Electro Dominance. Like maybe you have like a, some card in your hand that you can't actually cast because you don't have the colors because you're trying to play like some five color deck or whatever. And you can just uh, be able to cast that card off of Electro Dominance. I think this card is, is certainly amazing in older formats where there's a lot more like, you know, like even like modern where you have like Ancestral Vision kind of things and all that kind of stuff. For standard though, standard, you're going to have to pay a lot of mana for this. So I don't think, I don't know if this will be well, I could see it being a four of. You're gonna to need to like have a lot of ramp for this to be a four of, or like wilderness reclamation, for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, this is this is gonna be a card that'll be played a lot. I'm thinking. I'm not sure if it's like a. I'm thinking. I don't think it's quite as an A, but I don't. I think this is an A minus. I'm I'm thinking here. The thing is, is this card has. A lot of potential to not do anything also there there's a lot of potential for the format to be too fast for electro dominance there's a there's a chance that electro dominance doesn't see a whole lot of standard play um so like the upside is certainly there there's a lot of potential but the downside is certainly there also um so honestly, I think I'm actually going to kind of go B plus. I'm going to go B plus instead of A minus. I think it's closer to a B than than an A. But it does, you know, it, it can do a whole lot. But I don't think that this is going to be a card that people are jamming for of a lot of all the time. Um, people will be at, at first, but yep, spoilers complete. And you're welcome, Unbearded. 
I think we'll see a ton of play to start with while people are brewing with it a lot. But, you know, as the format fleshes out, you know, maybe not. So I'm going I'm going B plus. Thanks, MTG Bot. That's the YouTube channel. Again, if you haven't uh, subbed on YouTube, please do that as well. Don't don't forget to do that. All right, next up we have a feral maca, one in a red for a two-two cat. So I guess cats are bears now. Cause so this is a this is a bear cat. Feral Hawkeye. Hawkeye, this is your card. This is your card. This is your card. Well, he's purring. So A plus. A plus. Nah, of course that's an F for standard, but that's a that's an awesome card. I, I of course like like the cats. Hope there's more cats. Um but you know it's an F for standard. Yeah. All right, next up, Flames of the Raise Boar. This is an uncommon five and a red. Uh, I haven't read this card yet. It's an instant. Flames of the Raise Boar deals four damage to target creature and opponent controls. Then Flames of the Raise Boar deals two damage to each other creature that player controls if you control a creature with power four or greater. Whew, that card's sweet and limited. That's an F in standard. Too much mana, but cool card and limited. Gates Ablaze. Two and a red. Gates of Blaze deals X damage to each creature where X is the number of gates you control. That's actually interesting. I I hate all the F all the sorry, I hate all the gates cards. But this is actually could be a good card. That's actually kind of a good card. Alright, D for sure. Yeah, this is definitely a a fringe archetype you build around um kind of card. Very fringe archetype. This is like, you know, your Lich's Mastery kind of level. This is a D. Yeah, that's actually... That's a real thing. I hadn't seen that card before yet. All right, Gore Clan Wrecker. This is a common three and a red for a 2-2 two -two with Riot and Menace. Hmm. I think I'd rather have... I mean, there's there's like a three and a red for a 2-2 two -two with Explore and Menace in like Ixalan mm -hmm. as a common also. It's the same kind of thing. It's an F. Goblin Gathering, two and a red. Create a number of 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens equal to two plus the number of cards named Goblin Gathering in your graveyard. So the first Goblin Gathering will give you two. The second Goblin Gathering will give you three. And so the first one is... Uh, whatever two mana make two goblins is called. Dragon fodder. There you go. The first one is expensive dragon fodder. The second one is hordling outburst. The third one is gives you four, so you get it's better than hordling outburst. And then the f fourth one gets you. F wait, the th wait is that right? The third one gives you four, and then the fourth one gives you five. Yeah. So I think so. This is like this is a really good card for a goblin deck, right? If you're playing goblins in standard, there's there's a certain number of goblins and stuff in standard, and everything. Um, oh yeah, they, you can have expansion explosion and copy it. <laughs> there you go. And you you could have uh, there's also like the double cast or whatever. You can copy it with that also. Yeah, you can get a lot of goblins. Um, I'm gonna go D. I think you know you kind of have to build around this, and this is very fringe. I I think this is this is a D though. Um, what D? Maybe D plus. D plus. I guess maybe C minus. Nah, D plus. Because yeah, like not only goblin decks have to play it, just other decks like. Um, with like Judith, does Judith? Does Judith count your, your, um, no, yeah, all your other creatures get plus one, plus zero? Oh, but non-token creatures is, is the, is the thing there. Red. It's good with Cavalcade of Calamity. Yeah, with this, where you can just deal a lot of damage with that. All right, I'm still going to go D, D plus. 
I think this is worse than Hordling Outburst in general. Like your second one is equal to Hordling Outburst, and it's it's just not very likely that you're casting a third or a fourth one. Hordling Outburst was really good, but I think this is a worse card than Hordling Outburst. Um, because there's just, you know if you like I've played a lot of Hordling Outburst and like Jeskai tokens and stuff, and casting a third and a fourth Hordling Outburst just didn't happen that that often. You know, like you usually cast one or two. Like casting three of the same token generator just doesn't sit, happen that often. But the second one is Hordling Outburst, which is an awesome card. So maybe C minus. All right, I'm gonna go C minus. All right, that's it. Final final grade C minus. Next up is a common Gravel Hide Goblin, one in a red for a 2 1 that has three and a green. Gravel Hide Goblin gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. That's an F. All right, this is a rare Immolation Shaman, one in a red for a 1 3. Whenever an opponent activates an ability of an artifact, creature, or land that isn't a mana ability, Immola Immolation Shaman deals one damage to that, pay to that player. And you can pay three. RR, Immolation Shaman gets plus three, plus three, and gains Menace until end of turn. All right, so two mana, one, three, and red. Ooh, a lot of people are saying, like, B, B minus, and then D, C. So, yeah, lots of people are all over the place here with the grades. Um, so two mana for a one, three is not great in standard. So you really need this, this ability. So whenever an opponent activates an ability of an artifact, a creature, or a land that isn't a mana ability, it deals one damage to them. Are there really, like, that many abilities of artifacts, creatures, and lands that aren't mana abilities? It is, I mean, it does trigger a spectacle. But in standard, are there really that many? So there's, like, what, Ascanta, if it's flipped, treasure map... Adapt has a couple. Land War Elf is a mana ability, so it doesn't count Land War Elf. That's just not very many. A Danto Vanguard, yeah, that would count. I just feel like that's not going to do that much. And it's just a 2 mana 1 3. Yeah, Doom Whisperer, Shalai. There's, that's just not, that's just not doing very much. I'm thinking this is like a. I don't know. It certainly seems a lot worse than like the C's that I have up there. Maybe more than the maybe a D. Maybe this is like gutter snipe level. That's probably like a D. Yeah, just one just two mana one three. This is not that's just not really worth it. And it only deals one damage. I mean sure, you can also spend five mana and make it a, a four six menace. That's that's kinda cool, but that's not that's not worth it. I'm going like D. Light up the stage. Uncommon. Two and a red. Exile the top two cards of your library until end of your next turn. You may play those cards. And it has spectacle for just a red. Th now this I'm on board with also. This card is nice. So it's it's basically divination for red at its you know, it's basically divination, um, where you have to play the two cards that you that you draw um, by the end of your next turn. One thing about this card I don't like, though, I don't like the I don't like that uh, um, just that uh, um, I don't know the word uh, that design. There we go. I don't like that design. That you have to wait. That you, that you basically you have to track until the end of your next turn. Which when you're playing in paper, that's like pretty annoying to have like these cards exiled and be like, okay, was that this turn, last turn, that kind of thing. Um, so the end of your next turn is, and also yeah, also that like that's kind of weird. Like when is the end of? So that means the turn you play light up the stage. You you play light up the stage. Then your opponent has a turn. And then it's your next turn, and you can play your cards until the end of that turn. So you can, like, on turn three, you can tap out and play Light of the Stage. And then you can pass the turn, and then you can untap, and then you can play those those spells, and so on. So 
Yeah, so that's why it's different from next end step, because next end step is the same turn. That's called memory issues. Yeah, that's it's kind of weird. Um, so anyway, besides that, it's red divination, which is great. Um, it keeps frenzy going. Absolutely. When you get to play this for the spectacle cost of only a red, it is awesome. If you're filling this with like a, just a bunch of cheap cheap spells and everything, um, and also remember, you can play those cards. You can play lands with this. Uh, yeah, your opponent sees the cards because they exile their face up. Your opponent gets to see them. Um, and yeah, you can play lands and everything. And and uh, yeah, I think this is close to an A. I think this is A or A minus. This card is awesome. Um, is it good for modern burn? Probably not. Probably not. Modern like modern burn. I think you'd rather just have another burn spell. Right, like you just want like all your your spells to either be like some lands or some one mana deal three kind of things. Um, so yeah, like I like this card quite a bit. I think this card's very good. Um, I think it, it works really well with yeah, like how we we talked about with uh, with frenzy works well with theater of horrors, all that kind of stuff. Um, I think I'm gonna go. I'm going to go A- minus on this card. A-. minus. Is that Flame Tongue Kavu on the art? It could be. Set up with Flame of Keld. Yeah. You do get to exile those those things. And yeah, you can set it up with Flame of Keld. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad divination. But it's also... it's. It's bad divination in a color that doesn't usually have divination or those kind of effects at all. And it's it's in a color that can really take advantage of those extra cards with having like a lot of cheap spells and so on. So yeah, I'm going A minus with light up the stage. Alright, we have a rare mirror march. Five and a red for an enchantment. Oh, I, I I know this card. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, and it's good. It is good against like Thoughtseize effects, right? Because yeah, you exile the, the cards; they don't get to see them. That or like, I mean, they see them, but they're not. They can't take them and everything. You're building around this one, boot. Nice, um, nice. Uh, Mirror March. Okay, five and a red enchantment. Is there okay? Somebody, somebody's asking about before I get to this card with the live the stage with the exile. I believe that that's face up. I think, but somebody's saying, well, thief of sanity is face down. Why is this? Does thief of sanity say face down specifically? Is that why thief of sanity is face down? Um. Anyway, y'all, y'all let me know there in chat. But anyway, mirror march five and a red enchantment. Whenever a non-token creature, uh. Okay, yeah, Thief of Sandy specifically, yeah, it says explicitly says face down. Yep, so that's why Thief of Sandy says face down. Okay, anyway, whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, flip a coin until you lose a flip. For each flip you won, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Those tokens gain haste. Exile them at the beginning of the next end step. All right, so this is this is the definition of a D. Uh, this is going to be a janky build around card. But yes, this card is sweet. I am excited to play this card. Um, I am excited to play this with Regisaur Alpha and play my Regisaur Alpha and win a bunch of flips and put a bunch of Regisaur Alphas into play that all have haste and they all make other dinos that have haste and and everything. You hate co coin flips? Yeah. Coin, coin flips online are a lot easier to do though. But yeah, or the new ooze. Or Siege Gang Commander. Yes, yeah, Siege Gang Commander for sure. Uh, absolutely. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a great one. Viashino Pyromancer, just deal two all the time. That could work. Uh, what about like Militia Bugler? What if what if you have this in a Militia Bugler deck and you're, you just put a bunch of buglers into play that go find you all sorts of other creatures like Siege Gang Commanders that have your ETB effects? So, so then you get to start playing those things. And like Chupacabra, Nicol Bolas. War boss. Oh yeah, a bunch of war bosses. But yeah, nickel bolus, make them like just discard their hand. Oh man. 
I mean, this won't just go in Nine Valley, but you know, we'll build around it. Uh, Zakama, Zakama doesn't work. You don't untap all your lands all the time with Zakama, because that Zakama says you have to cast from your hand. Swag Tusk and Modern, yeah, that's Modern though. Demanding Dragon is insane with this. Yeah, that's that's certainly a good one. Demanding Dragon, they have to sacrifice a creature or pay five life. Um, it is not great with legendary creatures. Like with Nicol Bolas. But you just make them discard their hand and everything. You don't get the tokens to kill them. Um, yeah, this is this is going to be a fun card to to play. Um, yeah, love it. Uh, it's definitely a D. Build around it. But I can't, can't wait to play that card. All right, another rare. Rix Mahdi Reveler. One in a red for a 2-2. When Rick's Mahdi Reveler enters the battlefield, discard a card, then draw a card. It also has Spectacle of two black and a red. If Rick's Mahdi Reveler's Spectacle cost was paid, instead discard your hand and then draw three. This card is awesome. Uh, I think I think this is an A as well. I think this is just this is just simply an A. I think this is like uh, a a two drop that you don't have to be black red to play. I think just even just red decks that just want two drops, just entering the battlefield and rummaging, just two mana two two the ETBs and rummages is a good card. And then on top of that, you can have this with the spectacle cost of also just having ancestral recall whenever you have no cards in hand and you play this for the spectacle cost and discard your hand and draw three. Maybe a minus. Actually, maybe A minus. I don't think it's... A, yeah, I'll go A minus. It's not as good as um, Runaway Steamkin, which I think is an A. But it's close. And I think... So I think this is A minus. Is this good in Is It Phoenix? Probably not. Because you, you got to have lots and lots of spells in your in your deck. And I know you could, like, discard a Phoenix draw card. But you don't want to have just creatures stuck in your, your hand. Yeah. Yeah, so you do need to discard your whole hand with the spectacle thing, but that's that's like late game, like refill your hand and stuff. So yeah. A lot of people in chat are, are lower on this card than, than I am. A lot of people are saying B minus, C plus, put it at B. Um I I like it a lot. I like the the rummaging effect in mono red where you don't you don't need to like spend mana to filter your draws, you know. A lot of times mono red loses they just draw a whole lot of lands or they can't find a land kind of thing yeah so i'm gonna go i'm gonna go a minus that's what i'm going that's a i think that's a really good card next up rubble reading three in a red destroy target land scry two whoa they have destroy target land scry two in here Thanks, Dr. Dents. Dr. Dents says, I like how Todd explains things in the complete and actual c content. I find it very helpful to re review my decks. Thanks. So I'm trying. Yeah, if you're playing some land destruction deck, Scry 2. Huh. You can play this in like prim yeah, Primal Amulet and start copying it. Or uh, same thing with like Mirari Conjecture, third chapter, start start copying it. This is not bad. This is one of the best land destruction spells we've gotten in a long time. Uh, Scry two is nice. Um, I don't think this is that. I don't think this is good in limited. Destroy target land in limited is not valuable. But in standard, you can kind of build around this. I'm going. I'm going with another D. Like this can kind of be the kind of kind of card that you, you build around, or you know maybe you'll see a slight amount of play in that. I don't think this just goes in any deck. You certainly need a, a land destruction theme. And you need ways to, to make this better because you are spending four mana on a sorcery that doesn't affect the battlefield at all. Doesn't affect our, the, the opponent's hand. You don't gain any card advantage. All you do is get rid of one mana source from the opponent for four mana. That's a lot to just remove one mana source from the opponent's battlefield. So, um, yeah, like I, I, I could certainly see this being played in the red white prison kind of deck um yeah because i've i've yeah i've played the red red white land destruction haphazard bombardment deck i could see this seeing play there 
but you are going to need other cards that you know, like you're going to be behind when you're casting something like this on turn four you're going to need other things like cleansing novas star of extinctions things like that that help you catch up as well oh yeah give tons and tons of things f ratings I'll definitely hey nerd girls gifting out a couple subs getting us up to the five subs on the day give me that goal all right welcome y'all enjoy the new emotes for the gifted subs there j, j man and smoke all right so that means we're getting a pack on arena but we're getting that pack of ravnica allegiance on the 17th so um we decided yesterday to start saving up these these pack goals so i'm writing it down we're buying one pack for all each five subs we get whenever Ravnica Allegiance comes out on the 17th, we're we're buying a pack and we're gonna be cracking open packs. So the next next uh, six days streaming each each five subs the next six days we're getting packs. So so packs it's, it's our first one. All right, uh, next card, Rubble Belt Recluse. Four and a red for a 6-5 that attacks each combat if able. That is an F. Next up is an uncommon Rumbling Ruin. Five and a red is a 6-6. Six, six. Enters the battlefield. Count the number of 1-1 one, one counters on creatures you control. Creatures your opponents control with power less than or equal to that number can't block this turn. That's another F. I'm going to be... Yeah, I'm going to be doing a, a lot of limited... Um, on the 17th i'm gonna be doing sealed we're gonna be having a 12-hour stream on the the 17th where from 11 to 11 eastern time where i'm gonna be playing sealed a ton and maybe some drafts afterwards we're gonna play some seals first um and draft uh but yeah that's how i'm gonna be building up my collection on arena is playing lots of limited uh, we are currently in in red. You can see like we have gone through white, blue, black. We are now in red, and then we're gonna have green and multicolored. Multicolored is gonna be a lot of it. We are at card number one thirteen out of two fifty nine so far. You can find replays on youtubecom slash c slash mtg my YouTube channel. Hopefully you go subscribe there. Um, white and blue is already up on YouTube, and black is uploading currently. Heck yeah, MTG Nerd Girl, we're gonna be playing some limited here. <clears throat> All right, next card is Scorch Mark. One in a red, instant. Scorch Mark deals two damage to target creature. If that creature would die this turn, exile it instead. So we're playing Lava Coil that only deals two damage, but it's instant speed. Um, this could be a sideboard card, uh, especially if exile is really important. If you're playing against like aristocrat style decks where you don't want them to creatures to die kind of thing. Uh, it doesn't kill Wild Growth Walker. Which is really annoying. It's a very good point. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go with like D here. Also, I I don't think this will see very much play because there's because you know we have lightning strike, lava coil. I think those will probably be, and we even have shock. I think we're gonna be playing cards like cards like that. But this could see a little bit of play, uh, depending in the sideboard like that. It does kill Midnight Reaper. It is it does line up well against Midnight Reaper. That is good. That is very true. Maybe maybe D plus or C minus D plus C minus C minus. All right, scorch mark C minus. There we go. Yeah, because we get rid of. Got to get some exile stuff in there. So yeah, C minus. It is a more expensive magma spray. All right, and here's the red mythic. Scargun Hellkite. Three red red for a 4-4 four, four flying with Riot. And it has three and a red. Scargun Hellkite deals two damage divided as you choose among one or two targets. Activate this ability only if Scargun Hellkite has a plus one plus one counter on it. It's, this is not an F. We got some A+. Plus. We got B, A or A minus, C, D, big F. No, it's not an F. Okay, so uh, at the worst, you have, at like the baseline, you have five mana, four, four, flying haste. 
five mana four four flying haste is certainly a pretty good card we have we have seen that in the past usually that gives you upside though usually your five mana four four flying haste have upside whether it's um like glory bringer or uh storm breath dragon things like that they usually have upside those cards were all huge cards and constructed though like those were constructed staples those were a's so this card this card does not really have the upside if you go four mana four four flying haste because you won't have the one one counter on it so you won't have this ability so we're not really thinking an a that ways i don't think the other thing though is it's not always just five mana four four flying haste you can just make it the five five though you know you you have that choice that's the thing like having a choice is quite beneficial like choosing to make it a five five when you're playing against the lava coil deck you know that's that's you know something that can be you know a big upside like having the choice like you having a choice of what to do with your card is always a lot better than your opponent having a choice so um so you know you can also make it five fives and Cryos is casting it off Domri is really nice. Yeah. Yeah, Domri, you know, gives it double riot where you can make it a 5-5 five five with haste flying. That is awesome. Um, and of course, whenever you have the counter on it, and there's also the enchantment that gives your creatures riot. If you have that in play with this, it's awesome. Like making this a 5-5 five five with haste is huge. That that makes the card so much better. So any of those effects that can give your creature riot, and you also have this, very good. Of course, there's other things that give creatures 1-1 one, one counters. You know, you can have, you, know, you could be playing this in a, like a Naya aggro deck and you have your Ajani adversary of Tyrants that ticks up on your Sarkin um, or Sargon and makes it a 5-5 five, five, and then you have the ability kind of thing. Night Owl with the resub for the 25th month in a row. Time to riot. Thanks, Night Owl. Thanks, for resubbing. Path of Discovery. Yep, Path of Discovery can get it there also. Um, so I think this is this is a strong card. I think I, I certainly think this is at least a B, um, and I, I'm kind of leaning towards B plus, honestly. So like the the two damage divided as you choose among one or two targets. That's that's not nothing either. Um, it does die to Chupacabra. I think I'm going to go B plus. I think I think this has a lot of synergy with with other Gruel cards that um, is going to make it pretty good. And I'm, I'm going to go B-plus with this card. I like it. Sargon, Hellkite, B-plus. All right, let's change this color. I think I went this color. Yeah. All right, B-plus. Up next... Oh boy. Best comment in the set? Maybe. A plus for art too. Yeah, Dom return four, that turn five is really good. Is it playable over Demanding Dragon? Absolutely. I think I think the Hellkite is a much better card than Demanding Dragon. I think it's much, much better than Demanding Dragon. Skewer the Critics. Two and a red deals three damage to any target, and it has spectacle one. Talk about a card you're gonna see a lot of. Got a lot of a's a pluses a minuses if skewer the critics was an instant i think it's an a plus i think this at instant is a plus this is sorcery though sorcery i'm thinking it's still a it's still it's still like lava coil kind of thing i think this is an a maybe a minus i don't know it's maybe a minus Actually, I think I'm, I'm going to go A minus. I think it's maybe a little worse than Lava Coil. It's it's right there though. Hmm. But the sorcery speed is tough, for sure. Yeah, you, we have Daredevil on the art. Yep. Yep. You got Daredevil there. Uh, is it good enough for Modern Burn? Potentially, and. Potentially with maybe moving towards probably. I don't want to say like definitely. I, I kind of actually I'm going to move towards probably. I'm going to go with probably good enough for Modern Burn. Um, 
which, you know, when you have cards in standard, they're going to see standard play. They're good enough for modern. That's, you know, always, always something to look at. Oh, <laughs> that's a great point. Considering the card's name, maybe I need to be careful when I'm evaluating this card. That's that's a that's a very good point. <laughs> but yeah, an experimental frenzy. This is awesome. Theater of horrors. Uh, this is awesome. You know, a lot of people are still focused on experimental frenzy, but theater of horrors is going to be amazing. Also, we'll be talking about that card also. Um, yeah, this card's not, and you have to do damage. Um, I'm going a minus. I think this card is incredibly good um you don't the thing about wizards lightning is you have to play crappy wizards in your deck for it this you don't have to play crappy wizards in your deck uh it does not die to chupacabra so that's good so yeah so i'm going a minus skewer the critics very good Yeah, good flavor as well. Yep. All right, Smelt Ward Ingus. One in a red for a 2-1. You can pay two in a red and sacrifice Smelt Ward Ingus. Gain control of target creature with power three or less until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste until end of turn. Activate this ability only any time you could cast a sorcery. I'm not going to lie. The first time I read this card... I thought it was had that ability, but it did not have sacrifice the creature, and so I was like, "Wow, this card is insane." I was, you know, but I I was just kind of briefly like looking at cards. That, that's all I thought. I was like, "That card's really good," and then just kind of moved on. I didn't like spend much time on it, but you do have to spend three and sacrifice it. So it's act of treason, a p creature with power three or less. Yeah, this is gonna be an F. I don't think this is gonna see any play. Uh, We've already seen other good two drops in, for red and standard. I think there are a good amount of good two drops in red and standard. I don't think you'd play this. Um, I'm going F. It can take Tristani until end of turn. All right, next card is a common Spear, Spewer. Spear, Spewer. Uh, red, O2 Defender, Tap Spear Spewer deals one damage to each player. You can play that unlimited, non standard. F. Uh, Spike Wheel Acrobat, three in a red for a 5 2, and it has Spectacle, two in a red. Would you ever play two in a red for a 5 2? No. F. We have Storm Strike, a red instant. Target creature gets plus one plus zero and gains first strike until end of turn and scry one. Hmm. Hmm. That's still just got to be F. <laughs> A. <laughs> yeah, good and limited. Good and limited. Not in standard. I mean, you do get to scry one. You give your creature first strike. Uh, if you want to make like a really, really spell heavy deck. You know, and you're trying to just get a whole lot of spells and everything, maybe. But there's already, like, crash through kind of things where you just get a draw card. Yeah, we're going F. Yeah, the, the Spectacle Demon, the Mythic uh, was... What's the name of the card? Again, oh, whatever it is. It's uh, It was an A for that card. But yeah, also rewatch re on YouTube. Uh, Tin Street Dodger, red for a 1-1 haste, and you can pay a red. Tin Street Dodger can't be blocked this turn except by creatures with Defender. Spawn of Mayhem, that's the name of the, that's the, name of the card. This card's not terrible. I think this is a D. This could see a little bit of play. Like, 1 mana, 1-1 one, one haste, red creatures, it's a good, maybe even, maybe even a D plus or a C minus, honestly. Um, it's a good spectacle enabler. Which, you know, you want Spectacle Enablers. Um, it's not as good as Fanatical Firebrand, but it's it's close. It's very similar. Uh, like, this, this, you have to pay a mana to make this basically unblockable, and then it triggers Spectacle. And, like, if you're trying to, trying to rifle through your deck with Theater of Horrors 
and experimental frenzy you certainly want just lots of just lots of one mana spells that help you do that um i'm gonna go c minus i'm gonna c minus on string no actually just a c that's just a c that's a card that will see see some play um and everything that's that's just a c so yeah judith will pump it also that's a good point yeah this is this is just a c and it's a goblin good creature type yeah it's just a, a solid c um All right, so that finishes out uh, red. Red had a lot of pretty decent cards, kind of like like red. You get you get some Fs, but um, some of the commons and uncommons light up the stage. Looks really impressive. Skewer the critics looks really impressive. Um, yeah, I'm pretty high on Rick's Moddy Reveler. Scargon is pretty good too. Certainly have some good red cards in the set. So. Uh, not really uh, too big of a surprise that the set kind of built around Rakdos also that we have um, some pretty good red cards. But yeah, I'm, I'm liking where red's at for uh, Ravnica Allegiance. Okay, we still have green to go and then multicolored. Remember, and multicolored and artifact are going to be together in one video. And that's going to be like the, the longest video because each one of these colors only has 30 cards. And then there's like um, almost half of the cards are multicolored artifact. <laughs> Close to uh basically like a third so that one will be a little bit longer but thanks for watching the red part of the ravnica allegiance um constructed review hope you stick around for the next part with green and again thanks for watching